والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are still studying the seerah of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام The Prophet and Messenger of Allah The Prophet of Islam Muhammad ibn Abdullah We've reached the stage where the pagans of Mecca decided to assassinate the Prophet ﷺ. And Allah, the Almighty, has permitted His servant and messenger to migrate to Medina, where the people of Medina were eagerly waiting to receive Him ﷺ and to live under His teachings. The Prophet ﷺ already has taken all the precautions needed. He ensured the companionship of his best friend, Abu Bakr, who himself had two camels for them to ride. The Prophet ﷺ organized to have someone knowledgeable of the roads and routes to Medina to take them there. His name was Abdullah ibn Arqat. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, ordered his son Abdullah to cover their way and their traces and ordered his servant and slave, Amir ibn Fuhayra, to come with his sheep as a shepherd and make the sheep walk on their traces so that people would not know or find or track them. They hid for three days and nights in the cave of Thor so that people would come down and then they can go on and travel to Medina because the pagans knew their destination. So yeah. they will definitely know where to track them. They were hiding in this cave to the extent that men stood just right in front of them and they could see their feet and Abu Bakr was terrified he said O Prophet of Allah if someone looked at their feet level they could see mm -hmm. us so the Prophet told him والسلام, Abu Bakr don't worry what do you think of two their third is Allah Azza wa Jal. it's two of us but Allah is with us, with His protection, with His guidance, the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. There are stories that claim that a spider put its web on that cave and that Allah Azza wa Jal sent a pigeon that built its nest and had its egg in it so that whenever someone looked would definitely That's know so that cool. this place has not been entered for at least three or four weeks because of the spider web and but all of these uh, 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 stories are not authentic and not, they're not true the Prophet ﷺ stayed there with Abu Bakr for three days and nights Abdullah used to come to them just after nightfall tell them about what Quraysh was talking about what the pagans were about to do and just before the break of dawn, he would go back again to Mecca, to his house, and pretend to be sleepy. Abu Bakr took in the strip all of his possessions. It was about 5,000 to 6 
thousand dirhams. And his father, who was a Muslim, Abu Quhafa, was a blind man. Once he learned that his son migrated, went to his grandsons and children. He went to Aisha and to Asma and told them, your father migrated? And they said, yes, grandfather. And he asked them, did he leave you something? And they said, of course. And they brought a sack filled with so small stones and gave it to him. And when he touched it, he thought that these, this was gold. And he said, Alhamdulillah. And he was at ease. Through this journey, which took a whole week from Mecca to Medina, because they had to go in hiding for three days and nights, and they had to take a longer route to Medina, not the usual one, so that no one would be able to trace them. Through this long journey, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, manifested the best behavior with the lovers of his life, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. He used to see holes in the cave. And he used to put his hands, his legs, his feet, just to cover them, fearing that there might be a snake or a scorpion that might come out and sting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he himself was bitten and harmed by the insects and the beasts in these holes. And when the Prophet woke up alayhi salatu wasalam and saw the hardship that he was in, he told him, why did you do this? Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr said with a very happy heart, with a big smile on his face, just for your sake, just for your sake, O Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They went on, and the story says that they met a shepherd in the middle of the desert. And the Prophet sallallahu asked him if they had milk to drink. And the man apologized by saying that all our sheep are pregnant. And pregnant sheep do not carry milk. So the Prophet sallallahu pointed at uh, a sheep that was not pregnant, but at the same time was not approached by a male, by a ram. And the Prophet ﷺ rubbed her belly, and subhanAllah, a pot in seconds was filled with milk that made him drink Abu Bakr and also the shepherd who was taking care of the sheep. The Prophet ﷺ went on his way with his companion and with the leader, their leader, Abdullah ibn Arqat. Back in one of the villages, there was a man called Suraqa ibn Malik ibn Jatham. So he might in some books called be Suraqa ibn Malik or Suraqa ibn Jatham. And both names are for the same man. While he was there in a pub-like, in a club or in a bar, drinking, he saw a man coming in and saying to those who were in that club, I saw the shadow of three men traveling on so-and-so location. And everyone knew that the people are looking for these men. And there's a big bounty to whomever succeeds in bringing them dead or alive. So Suraqa wanted this bounty. And he said, no, 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 these three men are friends of mine. They are so and so and so. And he gave three false names just to let everyone at ease and no one would go and pursue these three men. After seconds, minutes, he went out from a back door. He told his mate to prepare his ride with the food and provisions. And when it was night time, he rode to the direction, to the location that this man saw the three men. As he was riding, his only objective was to get the bounty. And it took him a while until he reached there. 
But when he did, and he saw the Prophet Sallallahu he's telling us that I was so close to the extent that I read, I heard the Prophet Sallallahu reciting and reading the Quran. And just as he was close to them, the front legs of his horse or camel, subhanAllah, went into the <coughs> ground and he fell over his ride. That, that, that was strange. He got his lots and it's sort of uh, uh, flipping the coin the Arabs used to do. They have few uh, arrows or pieces of wood and they put on them things to determine and decide for them what they will do. He said, I drew the lots and there was written, you will not be able to harm him. <coughs> so one lot said, you are going to capture him. The other one said, you're not going to harm him. So he said, damn it. And he went again. While he was on his way, he drew the lots again. And it came, you will not be able to harm him. And just as he was getting close, again, the legs of his right went straight into the sand. And he fell again. He drew the lots and it said, you will not be able to harm him. And he would not be convinced of that. He rode again to the Prophet ﷺ, but when the legs of his ride dug into the sand, he said, O oh Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, wait. By Allah, I will not harm you. Just wait, stop. So Abu Bakr and the Prophet ﷺ stopped. And the Prophet asked Abu Bakr to tell him, what does he want? So the Pro Abu Bakr shouted at him and told him, what do you want? And he said, all what I want is a paper from you proving that I saw you so that whenever I want to come to Medina and embrace Islam, I will do that. So uh, the Prophet ﷺ asked Abu Bakr to write him this paper. And so did Abu Bakr do this. And then the Prophet told him, Suraqa ibn Malik, how would you feel what would be of you when you wear the bracelets of the ruler of the empire of Persia, Kisra? How would you feel when you wear his bracelets? <laughs> and and, and, and Suraqa was, is this guy crazy? Everybody is on his back. He cannot even have a safe place to stay. Everybody wants his blood. And he's promising me, me, Suraqa, to wear the bracelets of Kisra, the <laughs> ruler of Persia. Persia. This is insane. The Abu Bakr gave him the message. The Prophet ﷺ told him, make the people miss our way. Or another translation, blind them from seeing our route. So Suraqa went back to his people and told them that I believe I've seen these three men going in another direction because I went in this direction and I could not see a thing. We have a short break and inshallah we will be right back. If you're 18 or if you're 80, if you've been Muslim for 50 years or five minutes, this is a show for you. You know when five times a day I've, our foreheads touch the ground in prayer. We beg for what's most important in our lives. We want to be good people, better Muslims. We want to serve Allah Almighty with all our hearts. In this show, Let's Talk, every week we're going to talk about Islam and life, how to relate with other people and how to serve Allah. We'll have studio guests. We'll have a live studio audience. There'll be a, an email for you to write to, talk at huda.tv. So if you're looking for something different, looking for something that will make you think, maybe even touch your heart, this is the show for you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Suraqa ibn Malik. He was a bounty hunter. He tried his very best 
to catch and capture the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr. Yet he failed. He sought the permission of his gods, whether he will be able to capture him or not. And every time he drew the lots, it stated that you will not be able to harm him. He did this three times, and he was not convinced. He followed the Prophet ﷺ until he was really close to him, to the extent that he could hear the Prophet recite the Qur'an, yet the legs of his right went through the sand, and he felt. He fell one and two. Third time he said, this is real, I cannot catch him. He asked the Prophet ﷺ to write something for him, the Prophet gave him the good and glad tiding that he one day will wear the bracelets of the Emperor of Persia, Kisra. And he thought to himself that this is insane. This man is being followed and pursued. There's money on his head and he's promising me to wear the bracelets of not the King of Arabia, but the emperor of Persia that the Romans themselves fear, this is, this is not, not, not true and not correct. Yet, he took the paper and left. The Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr continued their way to Medina. The people of Medina, every single day of the past seven days, used to go from sunrise until sunset, awaiting the presence and the coming, the arrival of the Prophet ﷺ. But as we know, it took him a whole week to reach there. They wanted to greet the Prophet ﷺ. They wanted to meet him firsthand. They knew that he was the mercy to all mankind. So they went there, waited under the sun, until one day, one of the Jews in his farm was farming, and so the shade of two men coming, he knew that it was the Prophet ﷺ. He immediately went to the Muslims and said, Oh Muslims, it is the one who you've been waiting for. And they all went out to greet and uh, uh, receive the Prophet ﷺ. There are stories that say and claim that the, the, that the women kept on singing and chanting, saying that Tala al Badru alayna min thaniyat al wada, and all of this was unauthentic and it's <coughs> not acceptable for a number of reasons. One of them was thaniyat al wada is to the north of Medina. And the Prophet came from Mecca, which is to the south of Medina. So he did not take a whole turn round Medina to come from Thaniyat al Wada'. And secondly, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ were serious people. They were honorable people. They would not allow their women to sing and chant in the presence of foreign and strange men. The companions received the Prophet ﷺ and his companion Abu Bakr. They greeted him. And as Anas ibn Malik said, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, everything lit for in Medina. They felt that the joy was overwhelming in the people's hearts. It was the greatest day in their lives when the Prophet ﷺ saved and sound, teaching them, leading them in prayer, reciting Qur'an to them, talking to them, mixing with them, shaking hands with them. It, it was indeed the best moment in their lives. The Prophet ﷺ stayed two weeks at the outskirts of Medina. He did not enter Medina. He stayed in uh, 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 he, he had a tent and stayed in Bani Amr ibn Auf and he built the mosque of Quba. 
Masjid Quba, the, the first mosque to be built in Medina. And the Prophet ﷺ used to pray there. Do you know the advantages of praying in Masjid Quba? Does any one of you know that? Mm. The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever performs a prayer, a prayer, one prayer, in the Masjid of Quba, this is equivalent to a Umrah in reward. And of course, you know what is the reward to those who pray in Medina Mosque. There's five, 500 times, times, times more than, than any other than prayer. Well, that is for Masjid Al-Aqsa, for the Aqsa Mosque. It's 500. But the Medina Mosque, so it's it is more, 1,000 more 1, than any other mosque with the exception of Masjid Al-Haram. And you know what is the reward for praying in the Holy Mosque of Mecca and Masjid Al-Haram? How many times the prayer is multiplied? So many mudaf. Doubled? No. Medina, if you pray one prayer, it's equivalent to 1,000 prayer elsewhere. If you pray in Masjid Al-Haram in so. Mecca, it is 100 thousand times better and more than any other masjid so the reward is enormous to those who pray in Mecca and Medina the Prophet والسلام, stayed for two weeks in Bani Amr ibn Auf and he managed to build the masjid of Quba and after two weeks the Prophet والسلام, decided to enter Medina. So Bani Najjar, who are his uncles from his mother's side, came in full armor to protect him and to give him a good uh, uh, convoy with him. So he went to Medina, greeted by more than 500 of his followers, the Muslims, and this by itself was a nice way to receive the Prophet ﷺ, and it threw the fear in the hearts of the Jews who knew that he was the messenger of Allah جل, but refused to accept his call and his message. The Prophet while passing by every single house everyone would come out and say, O Prophet of Allah let me host you. It's an honor that is second to none. But the Prophet said, والسلام, no, leave the camel. And his camel's name was Al-Qaswa. And the Prophet, it was, it was the habit of Arabs to call their animals, to call their belongings. The, 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 the sword has a name, uh, the camel has a name, the mule has a name. And the Prophet والسلام, kept on telling them, Leave the camel because this animal has been ordered by Allah. And the camel kept on walking slowly until it came to the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari where it stopped. Ayyub, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari was one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and his house was made of two stories. So he told the Prophet ﷺ, O Prophet of Allah, you stay on top and we will take the ground floor. The Prophet said, no, let, it ha let us have it the other way around. Abu Ayyub said, Prophet of Allah, I cannot imagine me being on top and you are on the bottom. This cannot be. You are the messenger of Allah. You should always be on top. This shows you the great love they had to the Prophet to the extent that the Prophet told him, no, we will take the bottom uh, floor, the ground floor, because people come in and out. It will be difficult for people to come in and out if you were uh, on, the uh, on the ground floor and we were on the top floor. Abu Ayyub says that we were so sensitive to the Prophet ﷺ being below us to the extent that if water was spilled on the floor, we used to get all the garments to dry it so that not even one single drop would fall by mistake on our Prophet. 
they're talking about water. And they don't want one single drop of water to fall on the Prophet ﷺ. The people of Medina used to come on in and out to visit the Prophet ﷺ to give him the pledge of allegiance to accept Islam and to learn from him whatever he, the Prophet ﷺ, had to teach them. In that era, the Prophet ﷺ faced with the problem of those who migrated with him and they were called they were called Al-Muhajirun. That Immigrate. this is their name. The, the, the one who migrated. Immigrated. Yeah. Yes. Al-Muhajirun. And the people of Medina who were known to be Al-Ansar. Al so we had the Al-Muhajirun and Al Al-Ansar. The Prophet Wasallam was faced with a problem. The Prophet Wasallam was faced with a problem. And that problem was that those who migrated from Mecca left their properties behind them, left their money. They yeah. came with nothing except their garments. So the people of Medina were farmers, were merchants, were, had lots of money, lots, lots of good things in them. So the, problem, the Prophet ﷺ had to solve this problem. And he did so by associating one Muhajir to another Ansari. So one from those who migrated, he made him a brother to one from the people of Medina, the Ansar, and told him that, that this bondage is something so strong to the extent that if one of them died, the other inherited him. So it was even stronger than their blood brothers. They were uh, 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 associated together. They were made to be brothers in Islam. And this is indeed the strongest uh, uh, brotherhood uh, available. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. So inshallah, until we meet next time, fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm.